How are we going guys and welcome to November's monthly email and today we're at Tesco's. I'm just going to go around and we're going to show you how to make some better food choices, um, little tips about reading food labels and how to swap things out for better protein, lower calories and things like that. So I'll see you inside guys in just a minute. So one thing I want to make really clear when we're doing food shopping is that there's no such thing as good and bad foods. There's merely foods that are higher in calories and perhaps lower in nutrients and foods that are lower in calories and potentially higher in nutrients. It's making the choices that allow you to stick to the calorie number that you've picked and while still feeling full and satisfied and not restricted. Okay, there's no point cutting out chocolates biscuits cakes crisps ice cream you know yes you'll save a lot of calories but you'll make your life so miserable that you will not be able to adhere to that long term so i'm going to show you that you can include anything you want it's just about making better choices or having higher calorie days where you allow yourself the treats that you really like and then having lower calorie days so that over the weeks and months you hit the calorie targets that you need to hit. Okay guys, so let's get on with it. So when you first come into the supermarket, you're usually confronted with the fruit and veg aisle um, here. So this is a great way of getting what we call our micronutrients, our vitamins and our minerals in, which is really good for general immune function, body function and um, it tends to be, relatively speaking, very, very low calorie. So what you can do here is you can really fill, uh, you can really fill out your meals with a higher volume of fruits and veg, as it just allows you to get a lot of food volume, which is great for being uh, satiated, being full, and it will save you a lot of calories. Okay, vegans and vegetarians as well. You look to get a. Um, a lot of the variety in as well um, again another reason for this being so good is that it's very very high fiber which is good again for being full and for your digestion as well okay so a mistake a lot of people make is they will grab stuff off here because it's quick easy and convenient um, there tends to however be a lot of calories in a lot of the sandwiches a lot of the pastas and a lot of the other side dishes. So what you're probably better off doing is just coming just round and grabbing a pot of salad and adding either some sort of fish or chicken to this as it'll be much, much lower calorie. And also you can see from the size of some of the salad dishes, you get a lot more food volume in there as well. So when it comes to sort of bread, again, carbs aren't the devil. You can eat bread on it. But what things we can do to make uh, slightly better calorie choices is, for example, instead of the wraps here, the large wraps, you can go just reduce the portion size a little bit, use these smaller wraps that you see across the bottom as they're much lower calorie. And again, it's the filling that you really want, not necessarily the wrap. So you can just reduce your portion size and control your calories that way. Another great little swap as well, instead of using your full bagels, you can use these uh, bagel thins here, as well as the sandwich thins just across the bottom, as again, they're much, much lower calorie than a normal slice of bread. Um, and again, you can still have your breaded items, but save yourself some calories along the way. So things like crumpets again are another good morning snack, as they are quite filling and they're a lot lower in calories than um, some other sort of breaded items you can have so those Warburton ones are about 97 calories per uh, per crumpet which is great for saving calories and again it gives you that nice warm winter thing for anyone with any sort of, sort of intolerances to anything or if you just want to save a little bit of calories free from range can be quite good can be a little bit pricey sometimes but some of the breads and things actually do save you some calories. Um, so it's quite a good little substitute. So the bread tends to be quite a good one to save a few little calories if you just want loaves of bread. So here we've got our eggs, which are fantastic because they're really, really versatile. They can go into omelets, pancakes. You can have them scrambled, poached, fried, anything you like. Um, they're a really, really good source of protein. 
so it's very very good to get them in so here we've got our sort of our beans our pulses our chopped tomatoes and things like that now these are great because a they're really really long life and they're quite low calorie per serving they go into lots of different dishes and they're a good way of just bulking out meals so well worth getting i'd also recommend getting in some herbs and spices um, because again they will last for months on end they're relatively cheap for how long they last they can go in so many different dishes and it really will make your food a lot less bland so you're not just having chicken and rice out of a tupperware container so when it comes to things like pasta guys it's just about controlling portion size on a side note though for vegans if you go for a red lentil pasta it's a great way of getting in a decent amount of protein so for 170 gram serving you're looking at about 20 grams worth of protein so it's a good way for vegans and vegetarians to get in some uh, some good protein which is sometimes very very difficult for you to do so when we get to cereal guys you've got things like your porridge oats very very filling relatively okay calorie wise but again if you have a it's all about with cereal controlling uh, portion sizes okay but when it comes to cereal guys another thing to be wary of is things that are marketed as health cereals okay aren't necessarily as good as everything seems okay so if you take this for example okay so your portion size here you've got 160 calories for the 40 gram and if you compare that to cocoa pops which is traditionally a quote-unquote unhealthy cereal you'll see here for 30 grams that's 115 calories so if we round that up and call it 40 calories per 10 grams that's also 160 calories for a 40 gram portion okay so they're actually very very similar calorie wise if anything actually the cocoa pot's just slightly lower calorie but you know allegedly healthy allegedly not so don't always be conned by what you see so moving on to the dairy aisle now guys a great way of getting in some easy proteins um, <coughs> especially with the things like your natural yogurts especially the the 0% fat ones because they'll save you loads of calories and are very very high in uh, protein as are the aisle of protein yogurts up here just as we're here guys i do want to use this aisle to give you a little help with reading food labels all right so this is kind of how you'll interpret what you see and how you'll know to sort of track and, and things like that okay so with here usually these things are per 100 grams okay the things we're interested in when we're especially on the fat loss phase guys is how many calories because ultimately it's energy balance that affects if you lose or gain weight and how much protein okay because protein is great for the retention of muscle mass and also um, helping you be satiated okay so as you can see here we've got 54 calories per 100 grams and we've also got 10.3 grams of protein for that serving as well so again that's quite a good one to have but again that's what we're looking for guys is namely calories per serving and the amount of protein the good things to focus on again guys people who have got a bit of sweet tooth again like i do uh, these little yogurts here especially the milky bar mousses and the roller mousses they're about 80 to 90 calories per tub great way of um, sort of satisfying your sort of your sugary cravings and um, sort of staying low calorie as well also these pots of joy they are a bit higher calorie they're about 160 calories per pot but never has anything been more accurately named in the world these are immense there's another thing you might not expect to see on a, a food shop that for a quote-unquote healthy eating but cheeses are fine guys okay and if you do want to save some calories go for the 50 percent reduce you'll save yourself a lot of calories but a small little bit of cheese is not going to harm anyone <laughs> at all so for those of you who need to make lunch on the go or at very very short notice these sort of ready-made sort of sandwich meats are a great little snack to go for they tend to be quite high in protein advice i would give though is go for the uh, go for the grilled versions of them so the roast ones and you'll save yourself probably half the amount of calories 
So another great way of getting protein in, as well as your good omega fats, are your fishes, okay? Good thing about fish as well is, relatively speaking, very, very low calorie compared to sort of other cuts of meat. And if you're worried about it being a little bit expensive, guys, go for the frozen versions. There's nothing wrong with getting frozen versions. If anything, it'll keep the cost down and also you don't end up throwing much of it out. But no, fish, great way of mixing up a bit of variety in your meals by not always having chicken and mince. And very high protein, very low calorie, relatively speaking. And just tastes good. The aisle, guys, you've got your staple stuff like your chicken breasts as well. So to save calories, go for the skinless versions, okay? So you will save yourself a bit of calorie. Typically about 30 grams of protein per chicken breast. So really, really good thing to get in. Again, another really versatile meat source is your, uh, your mints, okay? Again, to save calories, guys, make sure you get the 5% lean mints as it will save you a lot of calories per your serving. Guys, is our um, lamb mints, your lamb steaks, things like that as well. Not crazy high per 100, uh, per 100 grams, sort of somewhere between about 150, 200 calories per 100 gram. Try and avoid the legs of lamb. They tend to be quite fatty. You end up having to throw a lot of it out and as you can see, much more expensive. So if you're looking for a bit of a fry up as well at the weekends because they are amazing, little tips you can have to save some calories guys is instead of getting bacon rashes, get the bacon medallions as they're much, much lower calorie per, uh, per rasher. You end up something around about something mad like 50 calories per two. So you can end up having like five or six rashes of bacon for about 150 calories. So following on from your, your bacon as well, if you do want a bit of a fry up with some sausages, now sausages tend to be, relatively speaking, much, much higher calories. So about two sausages, about 300 calories. Things you can do is, again, you can get the skinless lean ones or you can swap it out for these hex sausages, okay? So two of those are about 99 calories, so it's about two thirds less calories, okay? So it's a good way of still including the foods that you like into sort of meals you like, such as a fry up. So as I mentioned before, guys, don't be afraid to get frozen versions of fruits, veg, meats, fishes like that. It will save you a lot of money. It, don't, it doesn't perish as quickly. And again, nutritionally, exactly the same. So we're now looking at ice cream. Yep, you can still fit this in, guys. So this is part of the flexible dieting approach where we can, nothing's restricted, nothing's off the table. We just make better choices or we plan stuff in. So when it comes to ice cream, the temptation is always to go for Ben and Jerry's, which, you know, no one's arguing how nice Ben and Jerry's is, but at like over a thousand calories a tub, it's a little bit hard to fit in all the time. What you can do is we can go for these Halo Top ice creams, okay? Same amount of ice cream, and they do taste really, really good. But again, look at, the, look at some of the calories, like 300, 280, 360, things like that. It's a third of the calories for the same sort of thing. Also as well, if you do want something a bit more adventurous, you know, things like uh, your Twisters, your Fabs, your Soleros, your Smarty Ice Creams, uh, a great option. And also things like your Mars Bar Ice Creams are actually less calories than an actual Mars Bar. So you probably get twice the, twice the enjoyment for a lot less calories. So yeah, so you think, yep, like I say, your Twisters, uh, even your Flakes aren't terrible, like it say. So you can fit ice cream into a uh, lower calorie diet. It's just about making better choices or planning in the higher calories that you want. If you've got a bit of a sweet tooth like I do, um, these little jellies here are amazing because they're no more than 10 calories per pot and they are really quite sweet. So they're very good at sort of satisfying that sort of sweet, sweet tooth that you may get middle of the afternoon so they're good again and they're usually on offer as well so again no more than 10 calories per pot so they're absolutely brilliant but just make sure you do get the 10 calorie ones and not the normal ones so a lot of people do like a sweet treat each day so another little great little sweet treat you can have are little mini cake bars like this they tend to be between 100 and 140 calories per 
um, per bar, which is much, much better than laying your hands on like a full slab of cake, which could be four or 500 calories per slice. So now we're down the chocolate biscuit and the biscuit aisle. And again, guys, don't fear these foods at all. You can fit them in in anything. It's just a case of just tracking them and making slightly better choices. So things like the snack bars just down the bottom there aren't too bad at all. Kit Kats are about 109 calories per, uh, per bar for the two finger ones. So again, they're good. These little Freddo biscuits as well are amazing and they're not very, very high calorie at all. And again, instead of looking at things like the Doritos and stuff, you can get the uh, popcorn snacks as well. So here, looking at 85 calories, the chocolate popcorn, 126 calories per portion. And again, they're all under 150 calories. These barbecue... Um, Pop chips as well, under 100 calories. You can all fit all these in and still enjoy things like crisps and popcorn for a lot smaller impact on your nutrition. So again, guys, with things like chocolate and things like that, again, it's a case of reading the food labels, checking the portion size and tracking. So with the flexible diet and approach, again, as long as it fits into your calorie numbers, you can have it. But failing that if you do overshoot on one day don't panic one day doesn't ruin your life just adjust the calories on other days and if you're good for the week if you're good for the month it's consistency over a long period of time is how you win so with chocolate though things like curly whirlies the freddos and milky ways are much much lower calorie options if you do want to sort of have a, a reduced calorie intake another thing that's quite good as well is the uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. If you have one, it's about 80 calories per cup. But again, guys, the case with any of this sort of stuff is plan it in, scan the foods. If you want two biscuits, have two biscuits. Things like your rich tea biscuits, you know, your, uh, your hobnobs, um, digested biscuits, they're all fine. You just track and just make sure that you don't eat 10 or if you do eat 10, just plan in that you have eaten 10 and adjust the calories on other days, okay? The things I would potentially stay away from, guys, because they're a bit of a con, are these Belvita biscuit bars, okay? They tend to be really, really high calorie. They are marketed as a healthy breakfast product and they're just really not. So if you do like your fizzy drinks, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. They're a good way of just getting a bit of a sweet flavor and curbing any hunger cravings what i would say though guys is swap out your full fat ones for your diet versions as they'll save you about 130 calories so when it comes to flavored waters as well guys if you go for the sugar-free versions over the full fat versions you'll save yourself about 40 calories per 250 mil so again it's just go for the sugar-free versions and you they're literally no calories like one calorie per 250 so the whole thing there is going to be about six calories. So again, it's very, very little calorie impact. And again, you still get a bit of flavor in there as well. So when it comes to alcohol, guys, again, it's a case of tracking it, all right? There isn't really any like low calorie alcohol as such, sort of Prosecco is about 80 uh, calories per glass. But again, just track it and attempt not to sort of see off a couple of bottles a week and it won't really have that much of an impact on what you do. And again, it's exactly the same for spirits as well. You know, just track it and you'll know where you stand, okay? If you do go out one night, have a lot to drink, just track what you've had and you'll know where you stand for the weeks. And so that was the food shop video guys i hope you found it useful if you do have any questions about making your food shop more effective for a fat loss phase please don't hesitate to get in contact take it easy